Oh, someone commented, y'all just mad she's successful. Hello everyone, it is me, Salem. Welcome back to my Chanel. I know some of y'all are thinking, I'm not blonde anymore. Yes, I got my hair dyed again. It was fun being blonde for a while and being dumb, you know, but now I can just be regular dumb. I'm feeling pretty cute today, pretty cute. And y'all, my look is inspired by none other than Kimberly Kardashian. I think so, Kimberly. Oh. I don't know, is it? We're not friends, so I wouldn't know. And that is because today, y'all, is a very special installment of Salem's channel because today I'm going to be doing a reaction video. Miss Kimberly Kardashian, Miss Kimora Kardashian, Kimmy, Kim, because, uh, excuse me, because she's recently gone into controversy, which, Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. It happens every three to four business days, honestly. These women cannot catch a break. But to with be- With prime delivery. With prime delivery. I don't know when they're ever gonna catch a break, but recently, Kim said some very inspiring words, which is, nobody wants to work anymore. I have the best advice for women in business. Get your ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. What? And if I'm being completely honest, I mean, I don't either. That's why I haven't uploaded in like the last month. I've been hella gone. If I'm being honest, I feel like Squidward right now with his button of, I wish I weren't here right now. But, <laughs> Danielle, you can't laugh in the background. You're so stupid. I really wish I weren't here right now, button. That's how I feel right now. But unfortunately, I have to find a way to pay my damn bills. And so I have to get dressed up and act like a clown for y'all. And in honor of that reaction video, I'm dressed up like Kim K. Well, I don't look like Kim that much. If anything, I look like I ate her. But you know, and y'all already know the Kardashians are super tight with their sisters. And so I brought along a very special guest, Kris Jenner. Actually. Uh, my name is Carla Kardashian. Thank you very much. Me and Pino call each other the carb Dashians. Since it's with a K. Hi, my name is Carla Kardashian. And I'm Kylie. That would be me. I would be the Kylie. There's already a Kylie. You're Kaka Kardashian. That's you. That's why there's flies around you right now. You look great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You both look really hot. We should definitely go to Target and buy some deodorant and soap. Toothpicks. For you, not for me. But anyways. <laughs> Why do I keep coming back to you? Because you need the coin and views and the, and the engagement. For her channel, which you guys can go check out at Penny Tovar at YouTube and also follow her on Instagram at Penny Tovar. Penny Tovar and also follow her on Facebook and find out where she lives and dox her. Stalker. Oh my god. Yeah. I totally forgot. I'm sorry. Yeah, this is why we don't support all women here. I'm just <laughs> um, Speaking of not supporting women, let's talk about Kim Kardashian. <laughs> so Kim Kardashian has advice for women. For women. Mm -hmm. You and I, we are, we are Wh women. We are women. We were women. Like the TikTok song. More than a woman. react to Kim K's advice because she recently was on an interview with and, Variety with Variety and they asked her what advice she has for other women women in business women in business and we are business women there was a clip that went viral of Kim K's advice but I think that we should react to where it first came from so let's react to the actual the original clip yeah let's react to the okay. actual interview okay. and then we're gonna deep dive into the TikTok and we're gonna react to everyone responding to it because it has a blown up like crazy. When will it end with them? They never learn to choose their words wisely. But I know that you, low key, have a different perspective on it. So I'm very excited to hear your perspective on this whole thing as well. I just think in general, like if you really do wanna have an educated conversation, you need to be able to remove the person from the context and dissect it and really truly see the actual substance there, right? And be able to see all aspects of it all the facets of the situation because did you know the internet can be biased oh my gosh yeah because people on the internet definitely tend to jump on bandwagons don't do any extra research don't look into anything more and just kind of repeat what they hear for the record i just want to say 
I do not support this family. I do not follow this family. I do not keep up with them. I do not purchase their products. We do not keep up with the Kardashians. No, we do not. And I have a lot, a lot. And I mean a lot of criticisms when it comes to each individual person. For every one positive thing, I have 20 criticisms. So it's safe to say I have no preferential bias for these people. If anything, the opposite. Now with that being said, she going off. I still am gonna try to be as fair as possible and look at this with an open mind Selective rage is a very real thing on the internet. True. And I'm sorry, I'm not gonna fall into that. So yeah, I'ma just have an open mind watching this. So in other words, it's about to get shady up in here. <laughs> All right, y'all, but before we get into this video, I have a sponsor. Ooh. Thank you to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. I'm flying out to California soon to visit and reconnect with my extended family members. Family members whose only language is Spanish. And for those of you who have been watching me for a while, you guys know that my Spanish isn't the best and I could definitely benefit from brushing up on my skills. And that's why I use Babbel, which is the best language app for me. Babbel teaches you real world practical conversations in a short 10 minute frame. Babbel also teaches you about the culture, celebrations, food, and slang of the languages you're trying to learn, which is super educational. And what a better way to improve yourself this 2022 than to not only learn a new language, but to also learn the culture and celebrations and origins of that language that you're learning. And with Babbel, it is scientifically proven to get you speaking in three weeks. Get started today and click the link in the description below and get 65% off your subscription today. All right, let's get into this. So let's react to the interview first. Of course, the recommended video is her crying right next to it. But anyways, but Kim's crying face is very iconic. <laughs> All right, so this is by Variety, which has almost a million subscribers, which is pretty crazy. The views are I. There's like 300,000, almost 400. Why are you dragging Variety for? <laughs> Just watch the video. <laughs> There's 5,000 likes, and y'all already know that the dislikes are disabled. Are disabled on YouTube now. But we all know. We all for know that sure. it would be way more than 5K. And it's called Kim Kardashian's Business Advice Get Your Fucking Ass Up and Work. We are privileged to have not only Kim here, but Chris and Chloe and Courtney. They could be their own K-pop group because they have so many people. <gasps> what would their K-pop group? K-pop. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. You know what? No. Oh my god. She owes me money for that idea. If she comes up with that idea, y'all saw I came up with it first. Well, Kim K used to have a singing career. Remember the jam song? Yes, I am. My jam. Get your fucking ass up and work. She said I'm in from the start, we decided that we always wanted to be really open and honest to who we are. When well, not only 10 seconds in and it's already full of bull crap. <laughs> <laughs> she opened and honest, but not about that surgery. Dang, huh? you didn't even let her breathe, bro. It barely started. I let no one breathe. No one breathe. And I think something that we've always stayed true. There it is, folk. Your average family, you know, nine to five, nuclear family, <laughs> you know, living paycheck to paycheck. <laughs> Okay. There it is. So the screen right now, how can we explain this? They're in the middle of a huge acre of greenery. Look, there's a golf club. If there's anything there's golf, golf related, clubs, everyone's dressed up in pure white. Chris has golf clubs and has wine in her hand. Everyone just looks rich as hell. Scott it has a cane, even though he can walk. <laughs> Why did they give Kylie that hat? The hello, my baby. Hello. That's Kylie. That's Kylie, yeah. Where did the years go? She looks really different. Okay. She looks super different. This image right here is just so unattainable and unrelatable, I swear. You don't understand though, if everybody just got off their butt and worked, that's what they could achieve. My ass. <laughs> We always show, even if it's something that we don't fully want to get into, we always show a glimpse of something that the viewer really hasn't seen. I mean, I'm really excited. It's true though. They're putting everything out there. And also that imagery was iconic. They, they looked good. They looked really good. That's one thing you can't come at them for. Like they all look good and they're all really iconic. This feels a little bit more documentary style, coming from a different angle of- Oh my God, can you believe that Courtney is now dating the lead singer of Blink-182? What happened to Scott? I don't know. I don't know. 
him kind of paved the way in showing us how to navigate social media. I mean, that's true though. And that is kind of my first contra point that I want to make. One of the main points that I heard a lot of people say about Kim was she's never worked a day in her life. You know, she's privileged, she's pampered. Privileged, yes. You know, maybe she has a pampered lifestyle just because they have a lot of money. But to say she doesn't work, I, I mean, that's false because she is in e-commerce. That's essentially what she does. And e-commerce is not easy. It really isn't. I have multiple friends who have e-commerce sites and my friend works 80 hours a week. So for those like me who have a walnut brain and have no idea what you're talking about, yeah. can you explain what the hell e-commerce is first yeah. of all? Because when I think of e-commerce, it sounds like an insurance company. So, so e-commerce is has basically become the new norm of consumption. Gen Z has helped pave that way. And that's basically buying commercial goods online. You know, a lot of people that's buy their true. stuff online. Not too long ago, that wasn't the norm. People would go to, to the mall or to the stores and now people buy online. So that's e-commerce. My friend has an e-commerce business and she told me, dude, I work so much. I work 80 hours a week. And I was like, that's crazy. So to say that she doesn't work, I don't think that's a fair thing to say. It's a different but. type of work that a lot of people aren't used to. And there's a lot of passive income that has to do with it. So when people think of the definition of work, they don't think of e-commerce as it being work. Well, yeah, of course. Because like, it's so yeah. like unreachable and unattainable for so many people. Yeah. We literally have family members in our family that work in construction with concrete, you know, with piping and stuff like that, you know, and it's very hard work, very physically demanding. So when it comes to like this new kind of modern kind of work, even for us as social media creators, yeah. some people think, oh, that's not even a job, that's not even work, but there's a lot more work that goes into it than people think. Now, that does not take away from the fact that she's still very, very much privileged and has a very much pampered lifestyle. We see the hard work that goes into each person's business. And so when we... Which that's true too. Each single one of them has like their own thing, which is very respectable. It's really cool because they could easily, they have like their Kardashian business, right? But they all each don't write off of each other that much. They all have like their own thing. I know for a fact that you and me, like we both have Tovar in our name, right? Tovar sisters, but we still have like our own distinct thing. Right? So I think that's also something that people have to consider is that that is also a different type of form of work of being able to be distinct. How can I get out of the shadow of Kim? How can I take this platform that's given to me and make it into something? Because everyone can be given a platform, but that doesn't mean that something's gonna come of it. That's just the truth. There is a reason why, you know, this family individually, they're some of the most followed people on this planet on social media platforms. Like she clearly knows how to work social media, she knows how to do it. And the proof is in the numbers. So yeah, I don't know. I just don't feel like people can debate that. Love the product, see the work behind it. And um, they're- Not the Kendall Jenner tequila commercial. I'm just, I'm just gonna pretend I didn't see that and repress that in the back of my mind because I have so much <laughs> to say about that. It's <laughs> real same. I think we just get so excited for each other that we want to show it off. One thing I've learned from Kim is like how- be Why is Courtney rocking the Willy Wonka bob though? <laughs> Oh, if someone's telling you no, you're asking the wrong person. Yeah, that's right. You go, Chloe. Wait, that's actually smart. When someone tells you no, that's the wrong person. That's the wrong person. Here's another thing about this family that I think is smart, especially business-wise. They're literally building generational wealth and yeah. that is why they're so wealthy, right? Because mm -hmm. typically when it comes to a lot of celebrities, like, I don't know, let's use Zendaya as an example. She has siblings, but nobody knows the siblings. They're not really, yeah. you know what I mean? Some celebrities will have siblings and those siblings don't really do anything with that, right? Yeah. Whereas with this family, every single person has capitalized on that and has built something, which hence creates I mean, generational wealth in that family. That means that their kids are set, bro. Like their kids' kids are gonna be set. Um, Yeah, their kids are wearing like Gucci and stuff. The kids are pooping and vomiting on Gucci shoes like they said girl there was this day where me and Pinyon got like we got a pretty decent check from our jobs right and we're like oh let's pamper ourselves and be fancy and go to like bag stores we go to how many stores did we go to and we didn't buy anything <laughs> bro we went to like Kate Spade Coach Michael Kors all this stuff like I also went to like a Louis Vuitton in Vegas I didn't buy nothing I was like I'm not paying they're like oh this is cute you grab no it'll be like a purse this small you just put like one penny in it and it's like a thousand mm. dollars like are you kidding me i was like oh maybe i'll get like a louis vuitton belt you know it must be cheaper than a it was five hundred dollars i was like yo Bro, like hell no <laughs> no 500 is like half a thousand yeah like that's crazy that's a lot, <laughs> that's a lot. advice for women in business is you just there no, we this go. is the bar.
Okay, go back, go Wait, back. On. I just want to apologize for how long this took, but we finally found where in this interview they talk about women in business. So let me turn it up. Advice for women in business is you just have to do what you're actually passionate about because if you don't have passion in it, it's not easy regardless of how it looks. And I think people see things with instant gratification yeah. because of social media that they think it just comes easy to people. It doesn't, especially if you want something long term. I have the best advice. You know what? How come no one's talking about that? That was okay, good advice. Right? Everyone's talking about Kim's part, but no one's talking about Chloe's. That was actually really good advice. It's so true because like, if you don't wake up in the morning, right? Especially as an entrepreneur, if you're having your own business, if you're like, bruh, I do not care about like baby wipes. Like I could care less, right? You're not gonna really have I'm putting my phone on silent swear. Speaking of not caring, Liz. <laughs> Hello, Kim? <laughs> As an entrepreneur, as a business owner, right? If you don't have passion about the service that you're providing, it's just gonna be miserable every step of the way. And just extending yourself is, you're not gonna be able to, right? Like again, I'm pointing to my friend who has her own business. She works a lot of hours, but she loves her company. She sells, yeah. cause you have to enjoy what you do. Yeah. I think the thing that she brought up about instant gratification because of social media is so true. I mean, just look at content on the TikTok algorithm. You're constantly scrolling for anything to make you feel some sort of emotion that's part of instant gratification and people who seek out instant gratification you're always gonna fail because it's instant gratification just like any other emotion like hunger if you eat a little snack it's gonna go away it's temporary but it will come back and you have to keep feeding yourself but think of that mentally so i totally agree with that however i will say i was gonna say that to work in a job where you actually enjoy it i was gonna say that it's a very privileged position it is a privileged position it is because mm -hmm. you think people enjoy working at taco bell freaking dealing with kids Karen's and Kevin's all day. And there was a point where actually I worked a retail job when I was in college to try and pay yeah. for my books, you know, and it wasn't a nice time. There was people who were stealing, people who was fighting, uh, complaining about, you know, the signs and the percentages. It wasn't up my passion. I, I didn't love it, but I had to pay for my books for that semester, you know? So I mean- And I used to work a lot of volunteer work and I almost got beat up by crackheads all the time. But I mean, I mean, there is some people that like will look at few jobs and not understand how you can enjoy it. We always talk about this because our jobs are just very different. You're a nurse. I do not know how you find enjoyment in helping other human beings, period. Like I hate humans so much. Like I would never, and that's why I dropped out of that damn, oh. Anyways, point is I could never find gratification in any sort of way if I had your job. So at the same time, there are people who like from a distance, you're like, oh, how do they enjoy that? But they really do. But the truth is the majority of people don't enjoy their damn jobs. And it is privileged to actually enjoy your job. I mean, I don't enjoy this. Well, I do kind of, but I <laughs> just social media in general isn't that much of an enjoyable job if I'm being completely honest because you are the product and your life is out there for everyone to see. Every step you make, everything you say or do, if you breathe wrong, like people will literally try to get out the guillotine to cancel you. The people who accuse you of a nose job. Yeah, people accuse me of having a nose job and I'm like, bro, I barely turned into a legal age where I can get plastic surgery and I have yet to do anything. And like everyone's like, oh, you're lying. You got it done. It's like, can I just be pretty in peace? Damn. All right, next is Kim. She's okay. gonna talk. For women in business. Get your ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. You That's have to, so true. You have to surround yeah. yourself with people. That's so true. Have a good work environment where everyone loves what they do because you have one life. No toxic work environments and show up and do the work. There's so many things that Kim said just now that that's just not how life works for the majority of people. Yeah. Where everybody loves what they do. That's not realistic. That's not realistic. Even if it's like a feels that you like, there's gonna be people at the bottom of you and people at the top of you who don't like what they do or are telling you what to do. So, hello. Second was be in an environment that's not toxic. You think we have control over that? You think people have control over whether their job is toxic or not? I mean like the sweatshop that she uses for her skin plan. Well, they have to get their f***ing ass up and work, Pinyel. That's what they have to do. You don't think the sweatshop is toxic, girl? Okay. On the surface, her advice. If she right? wants to talk about toxic, she need to talk about Kanye West. 
sorry so on the surface the advice you know get up and work a lot of people don't want to put in the work as general advice i i can say i met some people where i'm like bruh you're frustrating me if only you did this thing you know your life could change whatever i get that however when it comes from kim kardashian especially with the things that she's saying it's like she's insinuating that everybody has the same resources that yeah. everybody has the same access to those resources that everybody has the same you know like starting point like the fact that you know she's not acknowledging the fact that her dad was already very wealthy and famous that's just a fact our parents were dirt poor we didn't have the same starting point as she did you know what i yeah. mean it's really tone deaf not based in reality for most people and it's actually really dismissive of what most people go through and it just goes to show and to prove the bubble that she grew up in which is with people who are privileged the thing about advice is that thankfully advice is something that you can take or you do not need to take that advice i could see being ideal for someone else that isn't us or of right, her caliber of her caliber that type of advice makes sense I understand that it could work in her favor, but for people who are regular schmegular folk, yeah, living paycheck to paycheck, living paycheck yeah. to paycheck, doing work that they don't want to do and it still isn't enough at the end of the day, it's sis, like it's not applicable. You know what I mean? It's a slap in the face. It, if anything, it's a slap of face of like, I am working though. I am trying to pay my bills. I struggle to survive and you're telling me that it's still not enough. Like, screw you. That's how I view it, you know? That's the main reason why a lot of people are upset right now. In a way, it's classist, too, because- It's super classist. Like, like the girl, whole white collar, blue collar, all that kind of stuff, you know, where blue collar workers are disrespected so much. And it's crazy, because they're literally the backbone of our society. People love to make fun of people who work at McDonald's or whatever. Well, that's why I don't agree with her saying like, oh, you need to work, hard work, and this and that. And people who were like, hard work reap, like, reaps like you know what i'm talking about oh yes i see what you're saying she has like this almost insinuation that just because you work hard you'll get results which is not true because yeah. everyone knows well at least people like us know and regular regular folk know that we are living in a time right now where just because you work hard and people can have up to like five jobs or three jobs or whatever it's still not enough so this whole concept of just as long as you work hard it'll come to you that's just not realistic and i'm so tired bro i'm so tired of people saying that those two intermingle when they just don't because if work were to work in a way where the harder you work the richer you are then the richest people on planet earth would be construction workers the richest people on planet earth would be the people that work on the, the railroads like all these other type of stuff like you said like agriculture like farmers like all these people would be the richest people on planet earth yet they're not I think another layer of irony and just detachment from reality is the fact that we are going through a panini right yeah, now. Yeah, panini. But so many people lost their jobs. So yeah. Many people so many lost people were their hella jobs. affected by it. So it's kind of funny to me, you know, when you're self-employed and have an e-commerce business, that's obviously more sustainable throughout what we've been dealing with than somebody who has a physical job that they have to be let go. I just think that's another layer of the irony and detachment from reality in her statement. This is the clip that went viral, like the clip. You're saying Variety Magazine specifically cut that clip and put it on TikTok? Yeah. Which is kind of shady, if I'm being honest. It's strategic. See, this is the thing about these people that is so funny to me. A lot of people love to cancel them or expose them when I'm like, they keep doing this stuff because it works. Look at us right now. It works. That's why they keep, you know, offending people, saying outlandish things because it brings attention. It says the Kardashians share their advice for women in business and they added all of them and it has 4.9 million views and almost a million likes. We don't need to listen to it because we just reacted to it. Let's look at the comments because there is 23.5 thousand. So we're gonna read all of them. All of them. The most clueless, out of touch thing I've ever heard. Having millions of dollars to start your business makes things a lot easier though. I only want advice from Chris. <laughs> Photo shoot posts on Instagram are really hard. <laughs> Is this a joke? Not the rich and entitled giving the working class advice on how they need to work hard. <laughs> I just know I didn't hear Courtney saying that sound true. <laughs> 
No one wants to work anymore. Maybe because minimum wage is seven bucks and rent is sixteen hundred dollars for a one on one. This is a bad take. I was actually really shocked when I learned that there are still states where minimum wage is like nine dollars. Oh, that's like, crazy. Oh my also, gosh. Also, rent right now, you were like flabbergasted when I told you how much I pay for rent mm -hmm. just for a one bathroom and two bedroom. Yeah, it's insanity. Girl, it's an arm and a leg. For real, for real. Yeah, like people's whole check is pretty much going to rent at this point. It's yeah. crazy. I know a lot of people right now that are just like, dude, how am I gonna get through this? And that was me and Kevin when we first moved in together. Remember I told you I had six dollars. Sixteen hundred is not only just the rent, right? There's also plus utilities, plus pet rent, or groceries. There's groceries, gas. there's gas, or things that you that are out of your control. When like your car breaks down. Your car breaks down or medical stuff. Like life is so expensive now that I don't think people understand how privileged it is to just say stuff like this. Thankfully, I'm in a position now financially where I'm privileged enough to not worry about how much milk costs but some people don't have that privilege they need to know to a t how much they're spending and doing all this stuff you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah that's why me and martin have always had the habit of budgeting because when we first got married to like we were literally two broke college kids just still in school and martin was working full time to try and be able to yeah. pay for some of our school and i had to move far away so we had cheaper rent. rent not only that it puts a strain on people's relationships like i don't think people understand that the whole thing of money doesn't buy happiness um, then give it to me because you clearly aren't using it well enough. I but money me. puts a strain on relationships. Money puts a strain and a halt on your life. Like that's just, I just can't. Here's the thing. People who say money can't buy happiness is because they have the money to spare to begin with. No one who actually needs the money is gonna say that. That's just the truth. Okay, so this is what the next thing that I wanna go to the next thing. I just know I didn't hear Courtney say that's so true. So this is something that I was made aware of through the comments. Apparently there's a clip floating around of literally Courtney specifically saying she doesn't want to work. Wait, do you think we can find it? Yeah. We all have different priorities and like, Working is just, it's not my top priority. It's, it's never going to be. Bruh! You know what? People keep saying maybe she was being sarcastic. She was not being sarcastic. And I actually don't think she said a bad thing either. Because, I mean, Courtney? Yeah, because a lot of people, they say that all the time they don't want to work. The only part that was bad is she sounds hypocritical. Is that she had to say the, that's, that's so true. true. When she herself says she doesn't want to prioritize work. So it's just kind of ironic. So we are going to be reacting to people's stitches now because there's a lot of people that start stitching the variety magazine clip. So this is from Thomas underscore the villain. Like nobody wants to work these days. You like, have to- Kim, shut your stupid ass up. Oh. Shut the f up. <laughs> With the amount of exploitation the Kardashian family have done, you got the mother- and go on and talk about somebody's work ethic. None of you raggedy back fucking plastic surgery fucking dolls have ever done a goddamn hard day work in your fucking life. The only reason you're fucking famous is because your father was Robert Kardashian, one of OJ Simpson's lawyers, and Ray J. You have darkened your skin. You have used black hair uh, uh, hairstyles. Mm. Shut the fuck up. Damn, that was so much he just said. You know what, I'm gonna just leave it at what was said was said. I don't even know what to say. People saying, humble yourself, Kim, you started on your back. What we're not gonna do is shame women for doing that type of stuff. That's not what we're gonna do. I know a lot of people always try to devalue Kim and shove it in her face of like, oh, you're not worth anything or your empire isn't technically an empire because you started on your back or this now. It's like slut shamey. And just let's not do that because why is it okay for women to be over sexualized but as soon as they want to profit from it they're the one in the wrongs i'm just gonna say this like that's invalid people who try to use that against her i think it's very gross like just don't however she do gotta stay humble right the truth is this right because kylie's a billionaire now right the truth is you just cannot become a millionaire or a billionaire without there being exploitation of people that is just not possible there has to be people that are being exploited and not paid fairly for their work for them to make these insane amounts of profits. So he's right. And not to mention that Thomas is also right in saying that they tend to rip off smaller creators and creators of color and people of color when it comes to their aesthetics. Like the A18 tequila. Like mm -hmm. Kylie Jenner's cholo shirt that like, y'all are not Latina, let's get it straight. I want someone to name one ethical billionaire. I'll wait. You 
can't. And I swear, if you will say Elon Musk, don't even get me started on his ass. Someone said she was born on third base and acts like she hit a home run. That seems accurate. Next up on Keeping Up With The Karens. <laughs> Anyways, so let's look at another clip. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. I hope one day you're forced to wear a Burger King uniform that doesn't fit and that smells like someone else's sweat. And then one day you have to go into the bathroom to clean up the toilets and you find smeared all over the walls and you're the only person that needs to clean it and then at the end of the week you get a 300 dollars check and that's what you have to live off of and pay your rent with damn that was very specific the username nuclear puss puss i'm so sorry nuclear puss puss that sounded very oddly specific and if you went through that i'm so sorry for some reason people really love to put down fast food workers Bro. Yeah, which is so crazy to me yeah. because it's like come on everybody eats fast food okay so like they're the ones literally giving you the food that you are ordering so like i don't understand how hard it is to say thank you for your work Appreciate not to it. mention the majority of fast food workers tend to be young adults and they're mistreated so bad already by like managers and just that because the power dynamic there just because they age but the people who eat there treat them so bad like it's not even funny i saw this thing that i agree with which is i believe fast food workers should be allowed to fight like fist fight one customer a day at least because dude the amount of people that they have to deal with that are so entitled and so horrible to them i can't but this is what i mean like earlier what i said some people can't choose for their environment to not be toxic no you think those people the person who brought a gun to popeyes over the spicy chicken sandwich and someone died that day do you think those workers got to choose what happened that no they clocked in and they had to do their job to get their paycheck and that's the reality for a lot of people and in fact it's such a reality that kevin my fiance had to deal with something similar oh, yeah. remember so my fiance works with restoring houses or repainting places and stuff right and he had to go to a place that was getting a lot of complaints to redo and he said that before he worked on the unit there was a lady there who had smeared her feces fecal matter all over the walls and this is what i mean like you think kevin got up that day for work and be like hmm time to clean up some shit. A lot of people don't get to decide what happens at their work. It's not a controlled environment. But when you're the head honcho, such as Kim and her skims and like her all these other types of things, you get to oversee everything. You are in control. Not everyone gets that privilege even to be in that position in their work. Very often it's people working under someone like that. The f is this? Who approved this? First of all, if you didn't know this, I'm sure all of us know this. Kim Kardashian and her family have always had money. Kim, Chloe, yeah. and Courtney's godfather is O.J. Simpson. Her Kim Kardashian's blood father represented O.J. Simpson in the trial. Mm -hmm. And if you're wondering why do those two matter, it's because you have to have a certain level of status in society in order to have a godfather like O.J. Simpson. That's just a fact. So clearly they've always had money. Moving on from mm -hmm. that, there are 131 million full-time employees in the United States. And out of that 131 million, 6% of them are below the poverty line. Not only that, but family who are a part of that 131 million statistic, if they have a child in their household that is under the age of 18, they are five times more likely to be below middle class and three times mm -hmm. likely to be at or below the poverty line. So as someone who's kind of always had the money and the support to make more money and run their own business, it's rather rude and ignorant to make such a blanket generic statement. What do you think of that? Of the statistics? Yeah. I know for a fact there are a lot, there's a big, big chunk of people who are living paycheck to paycheck and barely have enough to pay the rent car payment groceries and things like that and they literally do not have the money to save up so not to mention that women in the workforce are more likely to be poor than men in the workforce because there are more yep. single mothers than single fathers mm -hmm. i find it really funny how some people brought up the fact well because kim's a single mother Y'all, come on. Let's please not play dumb here. There's a huge please. difference between a multi-millionaire single mom and a single mom that is not super freaking rich. And working rich. multiple jobs. And working multiple jobs. You know what I mean? There's a big difference in terms of resources for the mom, for the children involved. Dude, and baby stuff is so expensive. I know a lot of people that get their asses up every day and go to work and they're still living in poverty mm -hmm. or check to check. They can barely make it. Number two, this false narrative, people just don't want to work these days. Where are these people? The majority oh, not of the people <laughs> work not the hard. How many people do you know that really just don't want to work? 
maybe a handful. The majority of us are working really hard. You know what's different though? We're not working for seven, 10, $12 an hour anymore just to make the billionaire the top rich. When you make $12 an hour and you're only getting 25 hours a week, you qualify for government assistance. No one wants to work themselves to death for nothing. You know what? She, like said, what she it said it very well. She said it very well. I love what she said. It's not that people don't want to work. People don't want to be exploited. That is so important to talk about. That's why so many people are like, dude, I don't I don't know if I told you, but where I work, all the workers of Wendy's quit and it's shut down for like a week. Oh no, yeah, I remember. Because there, there was a lot of people like just quitting quit. their jobs. Yeah. Because it's not that nobody wants to not work. They're realizing, huh, I'm doing all this work and it's still not enough. This at this point, again, like you said, is not work, it's exploitation. Yeah, I think that's actually a really strong point because if people were actually being paid a livable wage with good benefits, they would automatically feel a lot more appreciated and happy at the work. Like, you know, my time that I'm putting in here counts. Yeah, now that you brought that up, I remember when that was happening, a lot of news outlets were saying like, Gen Z, um, oh, young millennials don't want to work. Gen Zs are, they said that they're entitled and don't want to work. And don't want to work. Entitled? The millennials and Gen Z were given not only a broken ass economy there's no generational wealth that was passed on to the majority of us because the boomers got screwed over and gen xers were global right? warming we have global warming we have crappy ass opportunities for everything we can't afford not even section 8 housing inflation there's so much crap going on oh, oh we're entitled for wanting to at least be able to eat at the end of the night and be able to pay our damn rent that's entitled. I'm so sick and tired of people saying that wanting to live a decent life with no stress is entitled. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some people who actually are extremely, extremely entitled. I think there's a difference between being entitled and then people not wanting to be exploited yeah. and knowing the value of their work. That's because exactly at the end of the day, is. the companies need the employees more than the employees need the company at the end of the day, because they're the ones who are putting in, again, blue collar workers are the backbone of the economy. They're the ones putting in that work without them like you said it shut down it literally shut down which do you know was, what happened after that did they end up raising the wage or they hired new people and that's the thing is that it's such a huge vicious cycle where it's like you said yeah the company shut down but unfortunately these are companies that are like okay well we'll find someone who does want to work because again then there's people who are even less privileged who are like even though i'm being exploited and this and that i still need a job mm -hmm. and that really freaking sucks but i think the whole narrative of that millennials and gen z cheering are freaking entitled for wanting to just have a decent life and basic human rights and in basic the living human, space and the living the, space we're entitled for wanting the bare minimum like bye if anything i'm actually like really proud of those people you know that quit because that is honestly the only way to make corporations be better is to hit them where it hurts and that's their pockets fortunately there are companies that are making changes like i know taco bell know. has raised their wages which is awesome which is great and i know a lot of other stores i believe target too has also raised their wages so. yeah so it's really nice you know you gotta hit them where it hurts even though it is an exploitative cycle sometimes if it keeps happening keeps happening it, something will happen and i don't think legally we can be like y'all should riot or y'all should do no. this. but the truth is within history you can see that there's reasons why people did strikes there's reasons why people did riots or silent protests because nothing was being done i think now more than ever that's why people are resorting to that but i still again don't think that's entitled i think it's just people are so desperate for change and people are so desperate to be heard yeah actually i'm going to send you this really interesting graph that i found and it showed the rate of the inflation of the cost of living and the wages and the cost of living has has increased by mm -hmm. like tenfold whereas the wage has only gone up a few dollars now how that makes sense and it's kind of funny because there's a lot of people who will say you know young millennials and gen z they're entitled because they don't want to work to get a house and it's like um a lot of people can't get a house right now for real because again the cost of living has not grown at the same rate as wages it hasn't done this it has done this and because of this graph that's exactly why we now have millionaires multimillionaires, and billionaires where's the lie Jeff Bezos, if you're watching this, because I know that you're subscribed. He actually sold Amazon. Elon Musk, if you're watching <laughs> this, because I know you are because you're subscribed, I feel like I'd be an excellent wife. We can be polyamorous with grinds. I am very desperate for a house. Elon, daddy, this isn't you. I know you can give me a free Tesla. Please.
We went to a, in a Tesla for the first time. Our cousin has a Tesla. Oh my god. Yeah. You know what? That was yeah. nice. <laughs> okay, but like being in that space shuttle down on Earth, for real, it made me feel like I was in a space shuttle or something. I feel like my societal class went up just by 1% by sitting inside. And my self esteem went down like 5%. <laughs> No hate to our cousin, bro, I swear. I'm not yeah. talking about, not my cousin, but. That Tesla was just like one little vision that we had, right? Of how wealthy people live. But the thing is like wealthy, wealthy people, that's like their life. They're used to just stuff being so that way. I can only imagine how out of touch you would feel on the daily. Mm -hmm. Like that's crazy. Stay at your relative's house in Mexico with the door falling off the damn hinges and they're freaking bringing arañas all up in your clothes in the closet. Then tell me, okay? I wish you would have to do with that. But the food is bomb every time though. No, for the sure. The food be hitting good. Well, I, but like you're saying, it's just people's different realities. So I'm not gonna play this because I'm not trying to get copyrighted. Oh. Shut up! I'm not trying to get copyrighted, but can you read this? Okay, it says, Kim Kardashian encouraging women to get your butt up and work as if she wasn't born, raised, rich, and privileged, didn't get famous off of a beep tape with a celebrity, isn't appropriating black culture and profiting off young Damn. women's insecurities by selling false dreams of unattainable beauty standards. Oh, someone commented, y'all just met, she's successful. Is that what you guys call it? No. What? Oh my gosh. And this is exactly how Kim and her sister stay in business because of people like this. Were they saying, anyways, haters? No, it's not about, it's genuine good criticism. <laughs> Wait, so it's valid that? criticism. Nah, I'm just mad she got my man Pete. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I can't with the internet, bruh. I cannot. Also, I'm sorry, the whole Pete Davidson, that's a scam. They're lying and it's a PR stunt. I don't care what anybody says. I actually don't think they lying. The y'all just mad she's successful. First of all, can we talk about the last statement that this person put on their TikTok of profiting off of young women's insecurity by selling false dreams of unattainable beauty standards? I had a video where I put this clip in where they talked to the oh, to I the Kardashians that. where they kind of did Kim. It was mostly Kim. The reporter asked Who her, did. "Do you think that you promote uh, unrealistic beauty standards?" And she said, "No." And you know what she said? Again, she used kind of the same narrative of "I get up and do the work to look like mm -hmm. this." It's like, girl, how out of touch are you no you don't it's someone surgery. else did the work someone else did the work and you know what and not even to shame the plastic surgery there's nothing wrong with that but there's but nothing just be, wrong with lying about it but just re be real about it because the truth is like for example there's a lot of women getting like their hip dips filled in and i know right now hip dip insecurity is like skyrocketing right now because people are like well i don't look like that why don't i look like that not only is it yes genetics but it's also plastic surgery where you get it's filler so, so guys i'm literally telling you so like, this as when, a nurse it's anatomy and physiology and biology Literally, it's normal. There's gravity pulls down the meat from your hip. But right. the, the problem is that there's a bunch of young, impressionable people who, who will look at someone like Kim Kardashian and be like, why am I not like that? Why do I not look like that? Because I know growing up, for me, I was definitely that type of impressionable kid of like, why don't I look like that? Like, why don't I have a small waist, like a huge ass? Because right now I have just a small waist and a regular ass. Your butt is literally massive. Thank you. Actually, it's funny you say that because I have a very vivid memory when I was 13 years old and I was at Ulta and I told the worker, I literally pointed to this huge poster board they had and I said, I want the concealer this girl is wearing because under her eye, it looks like there's no pores, there's no lines. And then the worker, I will never forget, she said, honey, that's Photoshop. And I went, well, what do you mean? Like, that's not makeup. She goes, no, that's just Photoshop and re-editing and touching. And it was just so eye-opening to me because it never crossed my mind as a kid, like as an impressionable kid, I genuinely thought, Oh, that's just good makeup. I didn't think that like, they would just lie like, like that. Why would they be lying to us? Like, yeah. When I first discovered plastic surgery, I was like, what the hell? You can do that? That's crazy. Like for me, I was just like, but why aren't people like open about it? If I spent all this time feeling so horrid about myself and when they could have just told me, oh yeah, I got it done. I would be like, oh, okay. I feel better at being my normal self. But again, just people like, again, it was Kim this time. And last time she said that people got really mad at specifically Kim so it seems that she has like a pattern where she's delusional and doesn't understand and that she does not work hard for how she looks or money right it's just it's damaging because she herself has children and I really hope that she can really learn from these two mistakes and understand that her words have a lot of depth and meaning to a lot of impressionable young people and hopefully her children don't end up being victims of people reinforcing those impossible beauty standards that they themselves created there was one TikTok that 
we saw that wasn't screen recorded. We forgot to screen record it, but it really brought up a really good point. I know you wanted to bring it up, so. Just like one of the TikToks that I saw, a guy was saying, you know what? Good advice, but I don't want to hear it from Kim Kardashian. That sums it up pretty perfectly. <laughs> Because the truth is, like, if you do want your life to be drastically different, like, yeah, you, you do have to put in work, right? You have to exert yourself. It's not so much work hard. It's just, you know, honestly, a lot of it is knowing the right people, having the right connections, having, you know, good resources and those kinds of things. But you have to put in work if you want to see, you know, drastic results in your life. But it's not the type of work that a lot of people think it's mostly obtaining a lot of knowledge on how to talk to people again like you said like business connections and stuff it's not necessarily about like working hard hard like the way kim is making it out to be it's good advice but wrong audience and wrong person to be talking about it okay so i guess the way i want to end this video is if kim k wasn't the person who I, who said that, right? If it was a person that was, who came from like immigrant background like us, who came from nothing like us, right? Someone that we can just relate to, would you take the advice? You know who I think of? Jenny Bui. Jenny Bui. The nail tech yep. of Cardi B, but she also mm -hmm. is, she's a celebrity nail tech. That's what she is. She's yeah. very talented. Her story is so beautiful and inspiring. Mm -hmm. You know, she's first generation immigrant and she came, you know, from nothing. And she was able to build a name for herself a career for herself you know i really recommend that you guys look deeper into jenny's story because it's super inspiring and it's just one of those stories where if someone were to have told me those words of get up and work because she did she, she got, got up and worked, worked you know then i would feel inspired well guys that is it for today's video thank you guys so much for sticking around if you guys made it to the end make sure to comment a duck emoji down below but also tell me what your point of view is with this whole kardashian drama and what work means for you thank you so much to my sister penny for coming onto my channel make sure to follow her on her youtube and her instagram thank you for having me i always have fun and i don't know maybe we can have some more collaborations in the future hopefully Hopefully you guys really liked when we reacted to alpha males and so if this video does well guys we could possibly do a sister react series who knows thank you for having me and your stomach has rumbled about five times so you want to go eat yes i'm gonna go eat and you know what we should get taco bell because they actually pay their workers Okay, nacho fries! Nacho fries are back! Nacho oh fries! God. Before I end this video though, guys, I want you guys to do something very important for me, and that is just to make the best of today. Make sure you drink water, take a nap, do something that you love, and take a break. Again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!